Uh. Hi! <laughs> so yesterday I was sorting out my closet and I realized that I have a lot of art supplies. Some that I like, some that I don't, and some that I've completely forgotten about. And instead of an art supply tour, I thought it would be a better idea to make a tier list video because... Content! Okay, so here's how I'm gonna rate each of the art supplies, okay? I will give merits and points to how well I vibe with the art supply. Okay guys, honestly sometimes it's not about the art supply, it's about the artist. And by that I just mean how well it feels nice to use it. Huh? And also the value, if it's worth the money, and um... What was I supposed to say? I'm gonna be honest with you, we're off to a really messy start already and that's gonna be the theme of this video, okay? If you thought this was gonna be a proper list video, think again. Okay, so I found this template online and I tweaked it a little bit. I'm gonna be ranking these by number one. If I could bring three things with me to a deserted island, I'd bring it. This means if I were to fall from the plane, from the sky, and survive, in my inventory you would find a first aid kit, a knife, and this art supply. Number two, absolutely top tier. Meaning, yes, I fuck with these heavy, but I'm not that crazy over it. But overall, good product. Don't hate it or love it really. Meaning, I just don't have an attachment to it. And I'm pretty much neutral. Either that or it's just basic and boring. Not for me. This is probably an art supply that I genuinely dislike or I just don't really use a lot. And it is also most likely sitting in my closet getting dusty and I'm most likely gonna give it away to my younger cousins. And finally will be the first thing I burn to save me from freezing if ever needed. Let's get into it. Okay, number one. These are the Pentel Touch brush pen. I lived here immediately. You know how sometimes brush pens, they like fray a little bit after like, like using them for a long time? Not these guys, okay? They come in so many different colors. And I think recently they came out with a line of like pastel colors. So, love. And they're affordable, okay? They deserve the highest tier. Okay, next one, Prismacolor pencils. Good, good, top tier for me. Amazing product, but a little bit more on the expensive side. So, um, I think I can live without this. There's definitely cheaper options out there that can do probably almost the same thing, but yeah, still an amazing product. Okay, um, whole bean, I still don't know if it's pronounced whole bean, so correct me if I'm wrong, but as for now, whole bean. Whole bean acrylic go wash. I have the pastel set so far, and honestly, love, love. Colors, very good, mesmerizing. Sometimes I feel like I'm painting with cake frosting in a good way. See, I would put this in island here, but I'm not really a gouache dick rider. Sorry, sorry. That might change in the future, but right now, me and gouache, we kind of got beef. Okay, so me and Himi gouache, yes, but also no. Look, I like art supplies that don't need a lot of maintenance. These guys, are not it. Like, why do they keep getting moldy? But honestly, they're pretty fun to paint with. I just, I really can't with the cleaning and dealing with the mold. So, um, does not pass the vibe check. Moving on, we got the Karan Dash, uh, Neo Color. Karan Dash, I think. Yeah, let's just call it Neo Color too, okay? Island here all the way. It Love this motherfucker to death. Don't care if it costs me a kidney, it's worth it. Okay, so if you don't know what Neocolors are, they're basically crayons, wax crayons, but water soluble. That means if you use water on them, you can kind of use, like they kind of have that watercolor effect. And that is just genius. Whoever invented that needs to get their ass ate. Next. Pasta markers. Not a fan of jacking off the air before I make artwork. Though it's one of its kind, I guess. It's what the cool kids use, I guess. But it's pricey. It's chunky and clunky. It's a lot, okay? It's overwhelming. I don't really care about pastas, honestly. I know I'm gonna get hate for this, but let me live my truth. Not a pasta fan, sorry. Ohuhu markers, okay. A thing about me is that I don't really use markers a lot. 
and that's because they bleed onto the other pages. Seeing that on my sketchbook, not the biggest fan. It's it's ugly, it's gross, it's icky, and sometimes they kind of smell funky. Ohuhu markers, surprisingly, they don't smell, but they still kind of bleed onto the next page, and I'm not a fan of that. But colors are great, they work like normal markers do. If you want to start using markers, you probably should get Ohuhu's, I guess, but it's just not my medium, okay? Copic markers. Can I... <sighs> okay. If you're a working adult, okay, and you really want these guys, go ahead, by all means. But if you're a student in debt and you're eating ramen every night for dinner, mm -mm, don't do it. Copic markers are great for people who know what they're doing, but for people like me, I'm lucky I even live this long. I want to say mid-tier, but for the price, not for mid-tier. Artex acrylic markers. Yes, love these to death actually. The only issue is that they fucking fray a lot because they are brush pens, but they do the job really well. Colors are really, really rich and I love how you can like layer the colors on top of each other. Like every time, ooh, Crayola markers. Okay, they are affordable. Okay, I'll give them that. From my memory, they're great markers, rich in colors. The only thing is that that was a decade ago, the last time I used it. I don't know, they could be burnt here for all I know, but by memory, uh, I wanna say top tier. Yeah, top tier, top tier. Okay, Winsor & Newton pocket watercolors. I like these guys. They hold a special place in my heart because they were the very first art supplies that I spent my own money on in high school. And $30 in high school was quite a lot. I'd say island tier. Island tier. Mm -hmm. But only for the mini travel set. Sh um, sh I think these are called sh schmenke. Sh schmink? Schmink watercolors will cost you your other kidney and is probably worth it. Low key, I kind of like these way more than my Winsor & Newton watercolors. It honestly hurts me to even say that, but I, I cannot. I cannot allow myself to put them in island tier because I'm anything but a cheater. So I'm gonna put them top tier. Plus they're really expensive, so. Sakura Koi watercolors. These guys can rot in hell for all I care. They are grainy, dull, lackluster. If you want watercolors, literally get anything else. Trust me. Okay, Ohuhu drawing pens. They're water resistant, which I love, and they come in many sizes, love. So top tier. I think these are Sakura fine liner pens. I'm gonna have to put this in burnt here because when I was in college, we had this stippling um, assignment. If you don't know what stippling is, it's basically just like doing specs, like you doing dots on the paper like repeatedly. I did that with these pens and the nib of the pen went all the way inside the metal tip. It was just unusable at that point. Like. Is that not literally the purpose of a pen? A drawing pen? Like, make it make sense, okay? Crayola crayons for the price. These guys are good, but they're really, really messy to deal with and they break pretty easily. I'd say mid-tier, mid-tier because they've got really good colors, okay? And it's cheap and it's Crayola. Let's pay our respects here, okay? Gallery oil pastels, lovely colors, rich in pigment. I like using these on brown paper or just like cardboard, but they're also really messy to work with. So probably a mid-tier. I'd say mid-tier. Butcher oil pastels. This was all I had to use when I was a kid. Like this was what was this was what was accessible to me, okay? Every kid in the class had a buncho oil pastel in their bag. It was not fun, honestly. It kind of stank. It, it'd be stinky. I'm gonna put it burnt here. Burnt here. Ooh, zig brush pens. These guys gonna merit for me because it's not every day you hear a brush pen with like actual bristles on it. And it gives a nice little like sketchy effect. And I think it's also like water soluble. I think I'm gonna put this Neutral though because I don't really use it a lot. These are the Sakura Jelly gel pens. Is this a safe space? I hope it is. I used to have this once, okay? 
in high school and it just didn't work the way that I wanted it to. It didn't give me the same white opaqueness like how the other Instagram artists have used it. So I thought it was just really my luck and I went to the art store. I got another two of these pens. So I went home. I had three of these same pens just for them to turn out to be three of the same translucent white pens. It's heartbreaking. It was betrayal. So these guys burnt here at the stake. I don't care what you guys say, burn it to the ground. Tombow dual brush pens. I love how they're like dual sided. Okay, they get a point for that. But I'm gonna be completely honest, I forgot that I owned these in the first place. Maybe mid tier then. Next one, Zebra Click Art Pens. These are top tier solely because of how satisfying the clicks are. The colors are great and you never have to risk losing the pen cap because it's a clicky pen. The Pen Flex. I've been taking these guys everywhere with me. I don't know how I feel about these because they kind of bleed on the paper and that's not fun. But I'm a sucker for packaging. And if you buy their pens by like sets, they have this packaging where it stands by itself. So that's great. Mm, I don't know. High mid tier, I guess. Mild liner. Mild liner? More like mid liner. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you're gonna be taking cute notes with these, probably not that great for drawing. Actually, Maybe they might be great. I don't know. They're just not for me, okay? I mean, they have a great selection of colors, okay? They're dual-sided. It's made for the journaling girlies. And as a journaling girly, I love them. But as an art girly... Last but not least, Muji pens. I bring these babies everywhere with me. I love them so much. They are waterproof and they're just so light. And the best part, refillable refillable inks. They come in 0.38 nib sizes and that's like my favorite size of all. I use this for basically everything you can think of, like drawing, journaling, writing, stabbing people. Island here all the way. Island here all the way. I think this looks pretty good to me. I'm gonna have to put Muji pen in the front. Actually, Karen Dosh in the front. Karen Dosh in the front, Muji pen next, and the Pentel brush pens. Yeah, this, this looks right to Hello. me. I'm gonna have to put Crayola markers mid-tier and the Le Pen Flex top tier. I'm sorry, I changed my mind. I changed my mind. Crayola, I'm not the woman for you. You deserve better. Last but not least, the Burnt here. Ucho, all the way in the back. Thank you. Actually, the gel pen takes the cake. <laughs> And there you have it. That is my tier list for all the art supplies that I've owned right now. And um, I don't know, it might change in half a year, in a year. And if I have shot on your favorite art supply, sorry about that, okay? Um, don't hate me. <laughs> that just means more of those art supplies for you, okay? So that's good news. Tell me what your favorite art supplies are or your least favorite, the ones that you hate. I think that's way more interesting. Yeah, I hope this video wasn't too boring. I hope you were entertained. I hope you resonated with me maybe a little bit. But yeah, I might do an art supply tour in the future, maybe, or another tier list, who knows? Subscribe to find out. <laughs> but yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one. Bye. <laughs>